Here we are, chapter four, part three, guidelines for using verbal messages effectively. Verbal messages are complex. As we've seen in the previous two videos, there's a lot of ways that we can speak incorrectly, that we can overgeneralize, that we can speak in a derogatory way if we're not careful. Verbal messages should be highly effective because we can be so precise with them. They should be used effectively through using accurate reflections of the world around us. Verbal messages take quite a bit of effort in order to accomplish effective communication. So we're told here that we need to extensionalize. Avoid intentional orientation. So intentional orientation is the tendency to view people, objects, and events in terms of how they are talked about or labeled rather than in terms of how they actually exist. Extensionalizing, to use that orientation, is the opposite of intentionalizing. So intentionalizing is the ten tendency to look first at people, objects, or events, and then look at their labels. So you look first to the individual and then figure out how to speak to them or speak about them. Labels should not obscure what they're meant to symbolize. Labels are meant to symbolize the individual as a member of a group. So we need to be very careful about how we discuss those things and those people, objects and phenomena, all of the above. So the next thing is we should avoid what's called allness. Allness essentially means that uh, we fail to recognize that the world is infinitely complex. Thinking we know everything there is to know about something or someone based on a limited amount of interaction with that person. So it's not possible that we know everyone's motivations or that we know everything about their personality. For instance, I've known my wife for near 15 years, and we don't know everything about each other yet. There's still interesting things, experiences uh, from, from childhood or whatever that come up every now and then when we're retelling a story to another friend, and either I look at my wife and say, I never heard you say that before, or she looks at me and says the same thing. And so there's always something that we, we don't know about someone else. And it can be positive, as these childhood experiences have been, neat things to learn about your mate. And uh, then there are deeper, darker secrets, things that uh, people don't share with each other, whether from childhood or, or veterans who return home from war. There are bits and pieces of someone's personality and experience that we may never hear about. You don't know it all. Another thing we need to do is make sure that we can distinguish between facts and inferences. An inference is basically a, an opinion that's formed based on what we see or what we understand. So facts are what you literally see, or what you can literally point to as evidence. Inferences are more figurative in nature. Because language is the way it is, inference and fact sound the same. And so we need to uh, clarify to other people if it's something that's just our opinion or our, our guess. 
versus whether or not it's fact, especially whenever um, important choices have to be made based on what we say. This next part is somewhat ironic, I suppose, in a society that has trained us to hate the word discriminate. Your textbook turns around and says we need to be discriminant. We need to discriminate among people and avoid indiscrimination. This seems completely opposite of what we've been told most of our lives. But everything is unique. We need to discriminate between people that they are not just a member of a group, but they are also an individual. And so we cannot lump them into a group. Discriminating between people and not between groups. Everything and everyone is unique. And this idea of indexes is just a, a mental note that you can do for yourself. They explain it more fully in the text. But a mental framework that you can set up for yourself to help you remember to distinguish between members of a group of people. We also live in a world of extremes where people pit each other against other people. So you're either for us or you're against us. You're either right or you're wrong. And a lot of times, whatever issue we're discussing, there is no distinctive right or wrong. There's opinion. And there's some fact, but there's a lot of inference. And so to polarize it will simply cause bitterness and cause argument. You can look around and you can see that in whatever media you consume today. You will see people talking in polarized terms. So if we want to communicate effectively, we need to avoid those polarized terms. We need to state uh, the middle ground, try to include all possibilities. You want to avoid what's called an either-or fallacy. where You say you're either for us or you're against us. You're either right or you're wrong. Of course, there are some situations where there are only two options, but those situations are more rare than you might think. And then finally, update messages. Avoid static evaluation. People grow, people change, and the world changes around them as well. So if you knew someone five years ago, and then you meet up with them again today, they're not the same person they were five years ago. They have changed in experience, as have you. You're not the same person you were when you met them five years ago. Your relationship may be maintained and it may be just fine. Or there could be such drastic differences now in your interests that you find that you have very little to talk about. That's just one example of how uh, static evaluation might come to bear in relationships and the like.